Hey, what's up, Integrity fam? We are back with an Academy session on click checking, but today we're combining it with a DOM based access as vulnerability. So, in a way, we're talking about vulnerability chaining today. And let's have a look at the application. We're once again looking at a lab provided by Portswigger. And we're like I said, we're going to combine click checking with DOM based XSS. So we're looking around the web app and we find a submit feedback form. And what we would usually do first is we would just go ahead and try to play with the form. So we're going to put down a name, an email, a subject, a message. And we do see, thank you for submitting feedback name. And I was putting down name into the name field. So next up, what we are going to do is we're going to inspect that form with our developer tools. And what we do see over here is that indeed our user provided input was put down in a new HTML span element. And that is interesting because we need to find a cross site scripting vulnerability. So what we could do right now is we could just say, well, let's see if that field, that input field allows me to insert a payload. So we're going to use a basic payload over here, like an image HTML tag with a source of zero, which creates an error. And on error, we're going to alert one. I'm just going to fill out the form again with some random data. And once we hit submit, submit feedback, we do see that the payload got triggered. So at this point, we've actually found a DOM based XSS vulnerability. But now we want to combine that with click checking. So what are we going to do next? We're going ahead and go to the exploit server. And the exploit server, once again, is like a web application hosted by the attacker. So you could think of it as the attacker's website that the victim is going to visit. And over here, we can put down a body. And what we are going to do right now is we're going to use an iframe to frame the submit feedback form. And I don't wanna go into the details what an iframe is. If you're confused right now, Make sure to check out the video that I'm going to link for you in the top right corner. But now we're going to grab the URL of the submit feedback form. We're going to put it down in the iframe. And once we've done that, we can view the exploit. And what we do see is our little iframe, our little box that shows that website, the submit form on the attacker's website. So what we're going to do next is we're going to style it again. Once again, if you don't know what this is all about, check out the previous video on click checking. And we're seeing that for our iframe, we're giving it a width of 1000 pixel, a height of 900 pixel, and an opacity of 0.1 for now, which means we're going to make it transparent. And we're also going to style a diff container where we're going to say, okay, from the top, we wanna to go 815 pixels down and 80 pixels in from the left. And our div container is just going to be a text that says, instead of test me, that says click here to win. Really catchy, right? All right, so now we're going to view our exploit again. Now we're having set up a website that looks like this. You can see the submit feedback form in the back, it's a little transparent because we're giving it um, transparency value of 0 0.1. And you can still see that we are able to put down values in there. So this is fully functional. And in the bottom, you can see click here to win, which currently hovers, well, slightly over the button. But we are going to inspect the form one more time because what we want to do is we want to automatically fill that form. The victim who visits that shouldn't have to put down the content by himself. So we're going to look up the input field name. So we see there, they're called name, email, subject, and message. And why is that important to us? Because if we know the input field names, 
we can just create a get request, which means in the URL, we're putting down the names as parameters, as you can see over here, name equals, and we can specify the text that will go into the form. So once the victim visits the attacker's website, that form will be pre-populated. And in the name, we're going to put down our cross-site scripting payload. This time we're actually going to say on error equals print because the lab requires us to use the print function and not an alert box. For email, we're just going to use a random email, subject test, message test. It doesn't really matter. Like this is not important for the challenge. So now what you see is our ready payload, our iframe that we've set up to lure the victim into having this pre-populated feedback form. And you can see it once again over here. And we're also just playing around with the diff container styling a little bit to have this click here to win button. It's just a text, but really to really hover over the underlying button. So let's make this a little better one more time. We're going to adapt the values a little bit and we're going to increase the opacity. So that is going to make the iframe even more transparent. And now we have pretty much set it up in a way where it's not visible anymore to the victim. We can see click here to win, have us perfectly over the button that you also can't see anymore. But what we can do right now is you can just press it. And if we do that, we do see the print function getting executed. So now we are ready to go. Now we can deliver this exploit to our victim. And the burp lab is set up in a way where you can just do that by the click of a button. And we do see that we have solved the lab. All right. As usual, let's just quickly reiterate on what we have seen. First of all, we were searching for a DOM-based access as vulnerability. If you don't know what it is, I'm going to link a video for you over here where in a previous video, I have explained how to search for those. In a second step, we have once again looked at click checking. And also for that, please check out the previous video on click checking. But then the interesting part was that we were working on vulnerability chaining. We were saying, look, there is a way where we can combine a click checking vulnerability with a DOM based XSS vulnerability, put them together and make the whole attack even more powerful. And this is what searching for vulnerabilities is usually all about. You want to go for the highest impact, which will also get you a higher bounty. All right. I hope that this lesson was helpful to you. Please let me know down in the comment section if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer all of them. Please like the video and subscribe in the top right corner and I will see you folks soon.